Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Pavin, an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. Today, we're watching season four, episode 18 of Haikyuu called Trap. Sounds intriguing. Um, last episode, we got a little bit of a break from the Karasuno and Narizaki match, and we got to do a deep dive into um, Nakoma, in particular, Kenma. So, you know I love a good backstory, and you know that I love Kenma. So, last episode was amazing. We got to see you know, kind of his evolution and the evolution of him and Yamamoto's relationship, um, how they are just like completely polar opposites, but that they kind of like need each other in different ways. Yamamoto is very, very self-motivated. He works super, super hard. Um, he's really eager and intense, whereas Kenma does not like to sweat, does not like to breathe hard. Um, would much rather sit and play his video games. So it takes a bit of a push to get him to even like show up, but his brain is his asset. So just the interplay between them and how they kind of like needed each other to develop as athletes and people. So love that. Could have used a bit more of a Kuro. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I love Kenma. You know I love my boy Kuro, so who knows? Maybe that maybe that story is coming. But the Kuro Kenma relationship is so pure to me, and I love it so much. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what's coming. If we're gonna continue on the Nakoma train this episode, or if we're gonna go back and check out what's happening in the Karasuno and Narizaki match, no idea. But I am here for it. I am so heartbroken that we are like getting close to the end of IQ. Like, I'm not even gonna talk about it because I'm gonna get emotional. But, okay. Let's see. I am going to be surprised this episode. No clue where this is gonna go. But let's check out season four, episode 18 of IQ called Trap right now. That's volleyball, my friend. Okay, we went over this last episode. The, the group chanting scares the hell out of me. Don't love that. Um, you know how I feel about the headbands. Okay, won't go into that again. I probably will, but I'll try my best. The thing for me, and I know I said this last episode, I have never heard of a team in volleyball who purposely doesn't try to score to just wear down the other team. That does not make sense, okay? Usually it is the defensive team who continuously gets touches and keeps the ball alive, keeps the ball in play. That is wearing on a team. In volleyball, if you have the opportunity to score, you take it. You don't purposefully not score to wear down the other team. There have only been a couple instances in this whole series that I've been like, oh, not the most believable. This is one of them. Because if you're gonna play that, then you 
have so much confidence in your team's, your own team's defensive ability that you're pretty sure that you're gonna be fine anyways. And you cannot guarantee that. So I'm just throwing up my red flag here one more time to be like, while I appreciate what they are trying to highlight here, it is not realistic. Okay, I'm sorry to say it. I wish I didn't say it or have to say it, but it's true. Love. Okay, just let's go over the top of the block. That was a bit low, but I went over the block anyways. レフトの福田が君が生きてきたという形でしょうね。ちょっと、ご体力ないと分かってたら優れたちも狙えばよかったんじゃないの。ああ、狙うって言ってもね。セッターって基本的に2番目にボール触るポジションだからさ。セッター
or and then a one point pass is like desperation you have one person you can set it to and it's usually like the ace or the outside hitter or whatever um so hopefully that makes a bit of sense obviously if you're doing an a pass that's great lots of options very difficult to defend <laughs> if you're doing like several b passes the hitting percentage and the likelihood of scoring obviously decreases so that is the point that he's trying to illustrate here however i feel like this is most applicable in serve receive but we're seeing this team kind of try to make use of it on defense like they're trying to get that response from nakoma defensively which no that that just isn't a thing so i feel like that mindset is more applicable when a team is serving like we want to break the serve receive lineup to get the results we want it's not a thought process de process defensively but this guy is taking it like <laughs> to the max Sorry, it is 23-22. And you're thinking about resting Kenma? No, if it was 23-10, sure, let's talk about it. But this game is tight, so you better keep Kenma in. Nice dig. Yeah, baby. Nice receiver. Ha. Dude, he's not going to give up. Just put the ball high, give him time. Put it high. Dump. Set or dump. I'm surprised that Yaki, Yaku made that mistake. Okay, I was going to say. Okay. That makes sense because I was like, that was a pretty lollipop serve. 
and Yaku is like legit, so it shocked me that he would have sprayed such an easy serve to the right, but okay, that explanation makes sense. Um, even though Kenma may be physically exhausted, his brain is still firing. And so that is the important thing. As long as he is not losing his, you know, insight and analytical mind, they will be okay. I really believe that because their ball control is so good. Um, he's, he's going to be fine and he won't give up. Like his team won't let him give up. Let's put it that way. Little sleepy boy. I love how fat he is. Oh, I love those. Oh my gosh. Coming from the guy who doesn't receive. <laughs> Easy. Also, was anybody following that side conversation happening in the back? Is Inwoka kind of slow? He, it, it, the game is almost over and he hasn't figured out what's going on yet. Like, you know what? Okay, the two, it's the two middle blockers. No offense to middle blockers out there, but like, <laughs> head scratching moments. ただの我慢比べつまんないな。え、わざと because you're all so determined to begin with, interesting choice of words. That's what I said, just put it high.
I love a good mind game. I love a good mind game. And yes, we are seeing that right now. Okay, a couple things. We've talked about this in previous episodes about how it's important for the setter to use their peripheral vision to see how the blockers are moving to be able to isolate their hitters to get potentially one-on-one -on -one matchups. Kenma is the king at this. Okay, he is always, and it showed it in that last scene, like looking to see the movement and to go against the movement. So he is very good at that. Um, you see, it is a very, very effective technique in volleyball. I, it's called reverse the flow. So, and this is exactly that example. So for example, <laughs> I'm using that word a lot. Um, if the ball is passed to the right side of the court, it drags, that is the flow. The flow is going to the right. It's dragging the middle attacker because the attacker, usually for the middle, it's like based on where the setter is unless you're running a very specific play. So it's bringing the attackers over, which then drags the blockers over to be able to balance like a one-on-one -on -one type situation. In that scenario, if a setter is able to throw it all the way across the court, that is a really good idea because then the outside hitter on the left potentially has less blockers to face. And if it works the same way. If the ball is passed to the far left of the court, the attackers shift that way, the blockers have to follow, and that's when it's a good idea to reverse it and set to the right. That situation of reversing the flow is what we are seeing here and it's what Nakoma is using. Again, it is very rarely used on purpose. It's really nice to have a three point pass or an A pass to completely balance the court and to keep the blockers like not knowing where to go. Um, so it is rare that people run it on purpose, but I guess it is working for them right now. His face like disgusted. Too bad, we're in a coma. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, did he get a hand on that? Oh my god. 28-28, don't give up. Come on. Oh, stop it, no. <sighs> Kuro, word of reason. Hmm. <laughs> 
Sutter dump. I thought he was going to go for it. Oh my gosh, he tricked me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Kuro is very in tune with Kenma. And before I was like, as long as he can like use his brain and stay focused and be able to stay in that mindset, he'll be fine even though he's physically tired. He started to get mentally tired. That is not good. Kuro noticed that. <sighs> also, he tricked me. I thought he was gonna dump because it was just set up perfectly and he didn't really have anybody in front of him. Great set, by the way. Love that they turned the point. Also, very interesting. A little while ago, a few scenes ago, I was wondering why Kenma said, you guys have the desire, you have the guts. And it tied right back into this where he is admitting he doesn't have it. Um, because it's something you have to train and he was not willing to do that. But Yamamoto's perspective is very interesting in that like, it's very clear you don't like to work hard. It's very clear that you would much rather be doing anything else, but you never gave up once you started. Like you always made sure to see things through, even if you were miserable, even if you were like really struggling, even if you wanted to be anywhere else, you saw it through and this is going to come true right now he is going to see this through he is sucking wind he feels like he's going to die the other team who has been training the guts in that mentality will like lay the foundation for him to be able to see this through i have faith they have turned the point it is happening this show is so amazing <laughs> the team like relationships, the individual relationships, how eat like the team identities. Th this is too good, really, top to bottom. Okay. Nice up. Run. He's gonna go. Run. I have goosebumps. I oh my gosh.
The jump set, baby. Oh, he's he wants this. I have full body chills. boss yes he did it he survived Kuro is so proud of him did you see that love sister oh That's a big compliment. Yes. Mm. Fair. ケンマさん、あの、さっき<笑> それが根性だって。頑張ることに明確な名前つけないとダメなの。俺が頑張ったら変に切れてんだよ。試合中はなんか風に向かって怒ってたな。お前疲れてると人格変わりすぎだろ。当分が不足してるんだな。バナナ食
Um, he will definitely regroup and get his energy for that game, let me tell you. I love that Kenma got so worked up that he was like, can't I work hard for my friends? And then he didn't even mean to call them his friends. It just came out because he was like blacking out and low on sugar. And just to see all of their reactions and how excited they were to finally be called his friend. It's like, Kenma is the definition of a cat, I feel. It's like, the cat like keeps you at arm's length, like don't get near me. But when that cat decides to approach and wants a little scratch, you get so excited and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, come here, sit on my lap, I'm gonna give you a scratch. And you're gonna soak up that love for as long as you can until the cat is like, I'm done with you, goodbye. That's what that kind of feels like. Ken like Kenma decided to come in for a scratch whether it was on purpose or not, we don't know. It wasn't on purpose, he needed a banana. But, and then all his teammates were like, Kenma wants to cuddle, yes! And then they were so excited. It didn't last very long, but I loved that. Okay, also, I kind of feel like Karasuno and Nakoma are the most alike when it comes to the full team kind of feeling so many of the teams that we've seen and every team that Karasuno has played pretty much I have mentioned like Karasuno doesn't necessarily stand out on an individual level like Kageyama is definitely a star but like they don't have like the one dominant ace you know they they don't have the one player that everyone is like terrified of um their strength is in how they work together. Um, and I think we see that with Nakoma too, and Kenma even voiced that, is that it's not, I don't know the word to use exactly, but it was just like, it's not any one player, like we stand out because of everyone together. And I haven't really felt that so much um, from the other teams. So I think like if these two teams do actually get to meet up, it will be so amazing because it is really the two teams that represent the team as a whole instead of like star individuals. <sighs> I just think I talked without taking a breath for a solid three minutes. So excuse me while I <laughs> go pass away. Um, okay. I honestly didn't expect, I thought we were just gonna have a little taster of Nakoma last episode and then move back to Karasuno, but I will take that. I like that. I love Nakoma, as you know. I'm so happy they won, although that school did put up a very good fight. Um, I'm really happy that Kenma, as an individual, fought through and that the team had his back. Um, we need to see what's happening though in Karasuno. It's all been fun in games. It's been a nice switch up, but like I'm kind of anxious about where that Karasuno match is headed. So I'm assuming we'll see that next episode. Hit me up in the comments. I had a lot of opinions. I had a lot to say today. Um, <laughs> so I would love to hear your thoughts. I would also be so grateful if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more Haikyuu coming next week. Thanks guys.